Good evening and welcome to the BBC's entry for this year's most promising news quiz featuring four panellists sitting in a semicircle award. <laughs> After fears that John Major may not be exciting enough to win the next election, British scientists come up with an idea for doubling his charisma. <laughs> Meanwhile, following the decision by the Labour Party to win young people round to socialism before they reach voting age, Neil Kinnock's colleagues accuse him of going too far. <laughs> As a leadership vacuum develops in Iran, David Owen finally sees his chance for power. <laughs> and following claims that John Major's performance at Maastricht was disappointing, government chiefs decide that in future negotiations he'll be replaced by a plate of biscuits. <laughs> As you can see, we've uh, pulled out all the stops to give this Have I Got News for Yuletide special a festive air, which is why the BBC have splashed out on both bits of silver tinsel here. <laughs> That's uh, doubled the budget. Uh, for this one-off extended review of the year, Ian Hislop is joined by someone who specialises in playing slobs, boars, louts and half-wits, so he should feel at home here tonight, <laughs> Harry Enfield. Good evening. And with Paul Merton, someone who also feels at home with slobs, boars, louts and half-wits. He's a keen Arsenal supporter, Clive Anderson. <laughs> so let's uh, plunge headfirst into round one with an obscure story from earlier in the year that you may just remember. Ian and Harry, who's zooming who here? Uh, that's the war where we went to liberate Kuwait. Was it at the beginning of the year? Sounds so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was this year, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, and, yes. Uh, get rid of the Iraqi torturers and replace them with Kuwaiti torturers. <laughs> Satire. It was very successful, and we went in against Hussein, and he's still there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can call that a major victory mm. for Hussein. <laughs> but uh, Mrs. Thatcher isn't still there. No, well, that's, that's just a bonus. But, uh... <laughs> well, she wasn't there when it started anyway, was she? Well, well she didn't, uh, not in Kuwait, no, but she was, <laughs> she was in 10 Downing Street, if you cast your mind N back. Was she? That's all we've time for on panel. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, yes, it's the Gulf War, 1991 to 91. Uh, the land war, of course, uh, being all over in four days. Saddam had promised the mother of all battles, but in fact it turned out to be more the second cousin twice removed of all battles. Uh, back in London, there was a major scare when the entire Allied war plan was stolen from the car of Wing Commander David Farquhar. He uh, blamed his negligence on the fact that he was taking the drug Imodium, which is a diarrhea cure. But he was glad he had a packet of those around when he noticed it had been stolen. <laughs> uh, Paul and Clive. Can, can I just say at that point, it, it's interesting how um, the security service in this country works. So I had a phone call um, the day after it was stolen um, from a man who runs the D-Notice Committee. And I thought, oh dear, I've done something wrong. And he said, you haven't heard anything, have you, about <laughs> where these papers are? <laughs> and I said, no, I'm terribly sorry that I haven't. He said, well, if you do, just uh, give us a bell. <laughs> Actually, uh, so we're all safe. <laughs> Actually, uh, I, I had a phone call the day after it was stolen, but it was nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> it was my father, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, that's an interesting story. Yes. Though. <laughs> what did your father want? No. <laughs> uh, Paul and Clyde, three days, one summer for you to identify. Oh, yes. um, yeah, oh, this is a new uh, Keep Fit video, Shape Up and Dance with President Gorbachev. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just, well we've, we've spotted that it was President Gorbachev, yes, I think, correctly. anything interesting happened to him this year? Well, he's not had a great year, year, has he, yeah. really? It's been, uh... He had a nice holiday. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I didn't see how the girl fits in. Well, I'll tell you. I know that. Oh, yes, come Yeah, on. I know. That's his granddaughter, Irina, I believe. That's Very all good. I know about her. She's uh, 14. She's available yeah. for bookings. <laughs> <laughs> her yes. and Bill Wyman, wasn't it? <laughs> She's only 14. Yeah, a yeah. bit old for him. I mean. A bit old for him. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's, uh, it's, a, it's a home video made by uh, Mikhail Gorbachev during the three days he was confined to his uh, dacha by his captors, a recording he made over an old tape of his granddaughter dancing in the living room. That'll be fun to look at in later years. There's little Ksenia dancing in the living room. There's the attempted overthrow of the most powerful leader in the <laughs> communist world. Oh, look, and there's Granny dusting the mantelpiece. <laughs> uh, Ian and Harry. Who's, uh, who's this? Who's done so much for his family? Oh! <laughs> who's there? 
Okay. <laughs> There's the pension fund. <laughs> How do you get five million pounds? Five billion into a box, and mm. then it disappears. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think you identified it was Robert Maxwell anyway, which is the answer we were looking for. It's, uh, the I want to see him on top of a 20-year-old girl. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a Sunday mirror. I just loved mm. it, the Sunday mirror they had. Did you see that? The, uh, there was a secretary who said, uh, Maxwell slept with me. Mm. And they said, uh, was, was he gentle with you? <laughs> She said, well, as gentle as a 22 stone man. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one I, the one I Sorry, read. it tickled me. And her, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 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 if anyone sees a girl like six foot by four foot by two <laughs> inches. <laughs> but now, uh, purely for your entertainment, a chance to see the celebrated moment when, after Kevin Maxwell applied to Judge Harmon for the return of his passport, his lordship emerged from the throng of pressmen to get into his taxi. Who are you? On the cab On the boy on the cab drive! Are you the f***ing... Are you sure? <laughs> isn't, he, isn't he just gorgeous? <laughs> uh, Paul, Paul and Clive, whose cultured right boot is this? That was one cabbie who wasn't going to go south of the river, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just been kicked south of the river, in fact. Hey. Oh, that's poor old Gaza. Did a sort of neck-high tackle. And then he did another one. He kept doing it until his leg fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then he burst into tears, and he's been repeating that in uh, nightclubs up and down the land uh, ever <laughs> Since. It's uh, yes, it's Paul Gascoigne, the man with the physique of a blow-up doll, uh, with brains to match. Uh, he now faces a race against time to get fit before May, uh, which he's doing by being punched by invisible men and falling downstairs in nightclubs. Excellent training for playing against Italian defenders. <laughs> which uh, trivia brings us bounding to the end of this first round. At which point, uh, well, the score is about as even as Stevens can be. Uh, Paul and Clive have four, and Ian and Harry have four. Well, round two beckons, but before all that, in a futile attempt to inject a little festive spirit into the proceedings, we bring you our Christmas caption competition. One seasonal image per team. Paul and Clive, this is yours. Ian and Harry, this is for you. <laughs> and in the hours that crawl by between now and the end of this extended pantomime, it's your solemn task to come up with a Christmas cracker of a caption or two. But uh, first, let's confront you with a number of 1991 tabloid headlines to decipher. Paul, a rather uh, everyday claim for you. David phoned and said Socrates had just asked him to save the world. Um, oh, David Icke, it must be, or presumably. It's David Owen, David Owen, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, David, David Icke. He went bonkers and predicted that Oxford United would get promotion. Yes. <laughs> he said Arsenal would do quite well in Europe <laughs> as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it's David Icke, the former Coventry goalkeeper, now son of God, one of the uh, less publicised closed season transfers. Uh, to prove that he was the son of God, Icke announced that uh, by the end of the year, Saddam Hussein would be dead and that the Isle of Arran would have been uh, sunk beneath the waves under a gigantic earthquake. Well, uh, unless there are some major surprises on tonight's news, it looks as if Socrates has been at the Ouzo again. <laughs> Clive, a salacious little number for you. If she's a tart, I'll give her the boot. Um, I'm not sure about this, but there was a story earlier on the year about Norman Lamont, who'd uh, rented out his, uh, a flat of his to somebody who'd advertised herself as uh, relief masseurs or something. Was it Princess and, uh, Diana? <laughs> <laughs> I got confused. Yes. I didn't know what <laughs> I don't know if you ever managed to get rid of her or, or what terms they agreed for her departure. Well, it, uh, I'm not sure that she did ever leave, actually. It, uh, it concerns the oh, house saying she's still there. <laughs> well, in well, Norman I'll, Lamont's I'll, house. I'll give you the address if you'd like it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, How do you have the address, Clive? How do I have the address? Oh, where well, she is. well, if you go to the phone booth just outside here, <laughs> yes, quite anyway, a number of interesting um, addresses. If I could just uh, <laughs> leap in here, it's uh, concerns... Happy Harry is the one I rather like. The, uh... <laughs> no, I wouldn't bother. I'm just rather shocked that you're so rude. <laughs> oh, so you're rather nice, man. You're rather vulgar, aren't you? <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it turned out to be uh, Miss Sarah Dale, who was alleged to be a prostitute, but who insisted she was a sex therapist who merely practised in the nude, so as not to distract her clients. Must I always find that when I go to the dentist, so much less distracting if they're completely <laughs> naked. Uh, presumably now when Lamont goes home and finds a message that uh, the chief whip calls, he doesn't know whether to phone the House of Commons or pop downstairs. <laughs> he's, uh, just, he's just gabbling. <laughs> Harry, another uh, deeply religious headline for you. God's cock goes with a rocket. James Anderton, is it? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> He's a teapot, is yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 why are you doing Larry Grace? <laughs> Yeah, that's my James Anderton. Oh, right. You're, mime, you're miming like, a beard. So I thought I'd make him sound good. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I that's thought he, of a beard. He was, well, he's slightly camp, isn't he? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought he was. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. He's oh, guessing yeah. wildly here. Um, uh, yes. Well, he, he went. Yes, he retired. He, yes. There was a bit of a row before he retired. Good. And he got a rocket from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> As a, as a leaving president, <laughs> possibly from the Soviet it's, Union. Uh, it's yeah. sad to see a man groping in quite that <laughs> pathetic way. It's uh, the retirement last March You're of the chief, uh, <laughs> chief <laughs> of, uh, of Greater Manchester, Sir James Anderton, who controversially claimed he got his orders uh, directly from God. Uh, the rocket in question came from the local council and police authorities after his increasingly bizarre pronouncement. He accused homosexuals of uh, swirling around in a human cesspit of their own making. Yeah, yeah. I've got a phone number for that one as well, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just uh, leave them behind afterwards. That would be lovely. And he was also accused of wolf-whistling Fergie when she bent down during an official visit. So that proves he's mad. <laughs> And uh, finally in this round, Ian, brilliant uh, advertising or just a tacky attempt to get free publicity? Uh, Maxwell's death. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might be right, but it's not the answer I got written here. No, this is the United Colours of Benetton advert. They put up on a hoarding all over the country a, a newly born baby um, with everything on it, sort of blood and the umbilical fall. I don't know why this is the United Colours of Benetton. Well, it's because um, their jumpers now come with umbilical cords. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. Uh, the newborn baby was the third in a line of outrageous and shocking Benetton ads, the others showing a black woman and a white baby and two heterosexual priests. Now, that is unusual. <laughs> That's, uh, actually, United Colours of Benetton are really featured in your waistcoat tonight, aren't they, Angus? It's rather smart, isn't it? Are they? It? Yes, well, there's, uh, yes, there's one or two. Do you it want reminds to talk you a bit of a, a newborn baby, doesn't it? <laughs> They're not born with waistcoats, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> we will learn this. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but you're, no, are you on drugs, Harry? Or what? <laughs> no, I'm I was really simply <laughs> drawing attention to the sartorial elegance of the chairman. I think it's yes. a jolly nice waistcoat. And thank you, and I well, turn I'm it back in your general stream. direction. <laughs> All of which uh, drags us screaming to the end of round two, at which point... Uh, well, at long last, yes. Paul and Clive uh, have eight, but Ian and Harry are opening a gap with nine. <laughs> Commander Recount, what question did we not get right in the course of that? It's no good, Clive. Yeah. I've been through this yeah. with them. <laughs> <laughs> And so we uh, target round three, our hugely confusing but still mildly popular connections round. Each team sees before it a dazzling array of sights and sounds which together encapsulate a major news story of the year. Ian and Harry, unravel this lot. Gold fingers. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, I know what that is. Such a cold finger. Leather books. Um, now, Ratner got into trouble earlier this year by admitting rather stupidly that one of his goods was, was crap. All of his goods. Mm. No, no, you'll find you'll get a goods. lot of lawyers coming and jumping on your head, Clive. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I've got, the number, I've got, got the, the number for that one as well. well. Yes, yeah. <laughs> It is, um, it is... We don't get a right point now. for being funny, then, Angus. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, 
<laughs> not by the looks of things. It was yeah. only, it wasn't all his products, it yeah. was the decanter. Right, yes. Mm. Um, That's right, yes. And yeah. what he was actually saying was that all the other stuff, the earrings and stuff, are very, very good value. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, his share you... price fell through the floor. He said you'd be better off buying a prawn sandwich, it would last longer. Mm. Yeah. From M&S. You're not he getting did, any yeah. more points, though, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, um, it's, Why don't uh, you just unplug our scoreboard? <laughs> Angus, He's a bit Angus, of man, how many he? points do we get? Thank you. <laughs> Good. So, well, well done, Ian and Harry. Excellent <laughs> answer. It's uh, just paid away his entire fee. It's uh, <laughs> Gerald Ratner who described a decanter he sells as total crap and claimed that a pair of Ratner's earrings would last longer uh, or as long as a prawn sandwich. <laughs> a few months later, in August, Ratner was fined £11,000 for selling an unbreakable bracelet, which broke. His uh, lawyer explained that they were only unbreakable so long as he didn't try and break them. <laughs> uh, Paul and Clive, what does all this add up to? Queen of Curry. Curry's uh, legs. Mm. Oh no, it's that's normal amount. Uh, um, that's that. Uh, that's that's black, Paris. Black friend, uh, oh, Bob that's must be one of the Collins sisters. That's. Donald Trelford, yes. Liz Taylor, Liz Taylor, that's Eggs. Chick. We're back to oh, uh, Gerald Ratner. That's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's this, uh, is, is there any point in us actually answering this? <laughs> <laughs> no, Ian and Harry. This all right? This. <laughs> <laughs> This, this does fit you in, because Edwin Curry brought one of the very few libel cases brought this year against a paper other than Private Eye. Which is actually compared to Charlotte Rampling, yeah. which I'd have thought would merit a writ from Charlotte Rampling <laughs> myself. <laughs> Yes. And, and she managed, I think she was successful, wasn't she? She, she won damages, through. yes, she did. Where Very did devoted. the eggs come in to this story? Is that just a cheap uh, reference the to it? It was a story that's <laughs> three years old. Yes, exactly, yeah. a cheap reference just to help you uh, realise that it was Edwina, Edwina Curry. Curry, that's all. Yeah. Wish we never bothered now. <laughs> it's, uh, I, it's actually, with visual symbols, you actually helped us when you showed us a picture of Edwina Curry. That, that, <laughs> <laughs> that sort of pointed well, us in the right <laughs> direction. <laughs> But, but you had a choice of either the cryptic one. I see we're still symbols. losing, yeah. look. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Isn't she a regular on this programme? Uh, well, she was on it once, yes. yes. <laughs> Not exactly being a regular, as you'll oh. find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. It, yes, it's our old friend Edwina Curry, who won uh, damages from The Observer for comparing her to uh, an adulterous murderer played in the film Paris by Night by Charlotte Rampling. Uh, Mrs Curry said that uh, she wouldn't have minded being compared to Joan Collins. No, I'm sure Norman Tebbit wouldn't mind being compared to Kevin Costner either. <laughs> and that she'd even quite like to be compared to Liz Taylor. Well, OK, you're a fat, bloated alcoholic. <laughs> Strange request, but there we are. <laughs> Time now to... Another writ, I think. <laughs> Not sure who's from. Bloated yeah. alcoholic. Yeah. I've, I've just done Tebbit. that. Norman Tebbit. That was six years. <laughs> She's a lovely Time now one. to uh, descend the stairway of memories to the very <laughs> bowels Des of... To descend the stairway of memories? <laughs> <laughs> You're turning into Dennis Nord. <laughs> <laughs> and assured. now the stepladder of short-term <laughs> recollection. <laughs> The escalator of truth. <laughs> As we move through the corridors of irony. Oh, no. Still losing, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this isn't what question of sports like when you watch it at home. No. <laughs> they dub in beneath the they on fourth pretenses. <laughs> yes, uh, and now we uh, descend the escalator of truth <laughs> through the corridors of irony to the very bowels of the BBC archives. One piece of uh, rotting footage per team, both of which feature mystery voices. Ian and Harry, you're first. Who's this uh, fresh young face? We've had a German economic miracle. We've had a Japanese economic miracle. It's now time that we had a British economic miracle. Robocop. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what drug dealers always look like on the phone. Uh, <laughs> <film. laughs> That's the chap in the rape case who had his face blobbed down. <laughs> It's I don't know who the face is. The voice sounds like Norman Lamont. Mm. <laughs> well, let's just have a look. We've had a German economic miracle. We've had a Japanese economic miracle. It's now time that we had a British economic miracle. Well, that, was, that was before that woman moved into his flat. <laughs> <laughs> Turned his hair white. <laughs> I know, he, he's aged badly, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, Paul and Clive, another mystery voice from the past. Who is this? And because I'm a trade unionist, and it is because I want to see the Tories beaten, and because I am willing to use any weapon to beat them, 
that I am against EEC entry on these terms at this time. Ah, yes. We can, we can spot a bit of ginger in there. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that it took three hours to explain one principle which is going to be changed next week uh, is the clue, I think. Yes, I think it is. <coughs> uh, that's clearly the, uh, the heroic leader of the Labour Party, just, just ahead of a U-turn or two. Yeah. Well, let's see. And because I'm a trade unionist, and it is because I want to see the Tories beaten, and because I am willing to use any weapon to beat them, then I am against EEC entry on these terms at this time. Yes, it's, uh, it's Neil Kinnock in 1971 pledging to remain <coughs> out of Europe and being a man of his word. He's completely gone back on everything he said. In fact, he's done so many U-turns on the subject, he's now in serious danger of agreeing with himself. <laughs> of course, if we did go into Europe under Kinnock, it's dubious whether the interpreters would be able to stay awake long enough to translate any of his speeches. In German, in particular, where they put the verb at the end of the sentence, they'd have to wait three hours to find out what he was talking about. <laughs> Of course, uh, some of us have been waiting 21 years. Uh, at which point, I'm bound to tell you that that concludes have round four. Have you been four. waiting 21 years, Angus? Uh, not personally, no, no, 35 years. Right. Good. <laughs> um, Surely a point for that. <laughs> a witty interjection like yes. that. <laughs> at which point, I'm bound to tell you that uh, that concludes round four, and our tinsel-clad scoreboard now reveals the <laughs> seasonal tidings that, uh, well, Paul and Clyde now have 12, but Ian and Harry have a splendid 13. Round five would appear to be our odd one out round. Four gruesome quartets of much loved public figures, three of whom share some dark secret. Our panellist's job is to detect the infiltrator. Paul, a sporting foursome for you. Frank Bruno, Steve Davies, Paul Gascoigne's sister, Anna Maria, <laughs> <laughs> and Pantomime Horse. I'm sorry. That's, uh, that's a dodgy photograph there. <laughs> that's not, in fact, Anna Maria. I feel as if I should point this out yeah. at this stage. It is, in fact, her brother. You couldn't afford a photograph? Of no. Story. All the budget had been spent on the tinsel, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. um, it's quite obvious, really. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, Steve Davis, because all the other three have appeared in pantomime. It's incredible, and it's true. <laughs> yes, two points. It's, uh, he's the only one not appearing in Panto this Christmas. How do you know he's not the back end of that pantomime <laughs> horse? <laughs> Don't where would he, he, where would he put his cue? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bear thinking about. Uh, Clive, uh, four Jimmy Somerville lookalikes for you. Ian Hislop. <laughs> Arthur Scargill. Hang on. I don't like the way this Kenneth is going. Kenneth Baker. And Basil Brush. <laughs> well, I... Uh, mm. I was tempted to say Basil Brush because he has a hand up him uh, most of the time. But that would apply to Ian, I suppose. Uh, um, <laughs> um, they've all been in trouble with the law. Um, as, Clive, as, I thought you didn't want to go to court. Uh, <laughs> all been trouble. Kenneth Baker was found in contempt of court uh, recently, uh, although he is in, you know, Home Secretary. Uh, Arthur Scargill is always in trouble with the, the court, but he generally uh, is found not guilty in the end. He was accused of purloining a lot of money. Uh, by the Daily Mirror in a huge campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Pot calling the kettle black, I think, is the uh, cliché we reach for there. Yes, um, exactly. Ian Hislop is in and out of the law courts constantly. There's a revolving door. <laughs> Ye Hislop's entrance, we know it's uh, in legal circles. And um, Basil Brush, I think, sued the corn hunt for loss of peaceful enjoyment of the countryside. Um, so I've excluded all of them. Um, yeah, I'm the odd one out because I can't get this round right. Let's say it's... Um, uh, let's one. say I'd go for Basil Brush as the only one who hasn't been in the law courts. Very good year. indeed. So can I have a bonus? A for being, for being in, in the in picture. Yeah. <laughs> but just the technically, it's all about contempt of court. Oh, give my points to Ian then. Uh, that, that would seem fair. It's Ian, I meant to give you a Christmas present and there it is. Have my points for this one. The last time I've got something free from a lawyer in my life. <laughs> and the last. <laughs> Harry, uh, uh, an upper crust uh, selection for you. King Edward VIII, Princess Michael of Kent, Dame David Bowie, <laughs> and Benito Mussolini. They're all foreigners, except for David Bowie. I'd say that he's... Uh, the other three are all foreigners, are they? Except for the, the king, king and king David Edward. Bowie. <laughs> king Edward. Into deep this is a fascist here. question, isn't it? It is, yes. well done. It's Benito it's Mussolini's a fascist. The late... Allegedly, allegedly. No, no, Benito <laughs> Mussolini is a fascist. Yeah. Sorry, was a fascist. Was, yeah. I think we he's can good. say that without fear of uh, suing. King but Edward VIII had um, far-right sympathies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he met Hitler, didn't he? And um, all his friends thought Hitler was very amusing at dinner. <laughs> 
sort of country house fascist. Um, mm -hmm. Princess Michael, of course, isn't at all. <laughs> uh, her father was. He was a bit of a fascist. He belonged to the um, to the SA, didn't he, in Austria? That makes you the a Salvation fascist, Army. Outrageous! Outrageous! Awful thing to I'd say. I'd like to disassociate someone. myself from that. So, who are you picking as the odd one out? David Bowie. David is wrong. Bowie. But I'll give you one for getting the answer. Okay. Yes, I'll have, I'll have the points anyway. <laughs> <laughs> have the points for turning up. <laughs> And wearing such a smart suit. Yeah. Yes, can we, can, um, we get a chance to answer this? Yes, yes we, we know the answer. You can leap in and get the other. The we know the answer, right? don't we, Paul? Yes, off you go, Clive. Tell them. <laughs> but I'm letting you get this one. Well, David Bowie did do a thing at Victoria Station many years ago, publicised an album where he made a sort of fascist speech from the back of a car, which you've probably forgotten about. Yes. Um, I would say um, it's Princess Michael of Kemp. Absolutely right. It's, uh, so it's Princess Michael. As yes. uh, all the others were Nazis or uh, fascist sympathisers, she was merely uh, descended from them. And uh, finally in this round, Ian, four wise men for you. The Duke of Edinburgh, Haile Selassie, James Anderton, oh. and the Emperor Hirohito. Only one of them can do an impression of Larry Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. It's an interesting point, but uh, only one of them doesn't irrelevant. think they're God, isn't it? Yeah, it's a God question. It's it a, is. One of them isn't. It doesn't have a direct line to God, and that's yeah. the, the Greek fellow, isn't it? Well, that's not necessarily true, actually, because well, the Duke of Edinburgh is a God in in some very small British dependencies. Oh, is he? Anderson thinks he talks to God. Yeah. Um, Haile Selassie was God. Jar Rastafari. Jar Rastafari. As that's we cool. call him in the reggae community. <laughs> <laughs> Keep That's all that on Jar Rastafari. Yes, you. And Hirohito's a god, so we. Well, you plant. There's another of your answers where you're going to pick all four, and then. You can <laughs> Three of them are gods, and one of them has a hotline mm. to him. So that's the answer, James Anderson. James Anderson is correct, two points. Uh, he's the only one who is not worshipped as a god, or at least not outside his own house, anyway. <laughs> and uh, Prince Philip is worshipped as a god on the Pacific island of Tanna. Where he's known as number one big fella. <laughs> and uh, at the end of that illuminating round, it's plain for all to see uh, that uh, Ian and Harry have 16, and Paul and Clive have a far oh, superior no. 17. Jeez. So in this uh, one-off Christmas special, it's time for our exclusive royal round. Four regal headlines for the teams to decipher, beginning with Paul. What is the price of bonking Miss Tonking? I've got the telephone number. Anyway. <laughs> this is Mark Phillips, isn't it? Didn't he have an affair with somebody, uh, a woman in New Zealand, Australia? It was a paternity suit mm -hmm. that she put mm -hmm. in. I can't remember what her child was called. Your Royal Highness, I think. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's, Wasn't it because uh, the babies had hooves or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's New Zealand show jumper Heather Tonkin, who claimed in March to have been made pregnant in a horse riding clinic by Mark Phillips. <laughs> Uh, at least it was either him or Champion. <laughs> at the time. Uh, Clive, a bit of hush for this. Shh, one's thinking. Um, well, I can nearly remember this because I th it's something to do with Princess Anne uh, <coughs> wanting the, um, the loudspeaker turned down at Charing Cross Station. And uh, the thing I can't remember is why she'd, she'd have needed that. Where in uh, has she been living in a box in, on the Strand <laughs> uh, for the last year and has been disturbed by the Tano announcements of being, being very loud? Something I think that's like roughly right. Something along it? those lines. It's also a free advertisement for Schweppes, uh, the very, very good uh, uh, manufacturers of tonic water. <laughs> and um, what I'm very crap. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I think they're, they're nice. very good, and uh, let's see who gets the credit of it delivered in time for Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> that expresses my kind of company. Mm. Well, I had Easter I eggs. They do very good Easter eggs as well. <laughs> mm -mm, mm, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> is Schweppes. Can I just, it's, it's too, can too I just say that you can't? Can I just say that you can't beat gold bullion? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm afraid you can't. I think the announcement was the uh, A47 to Purley is delayed yeah. and uh, Mark Phillips has got another woman up the duff. <laughs> <laughs> so she asked for it to be turned off, I think. It's, uh, it's a reference to one Wednesday in April when uh, Princess Anne asked for all the announcements at Charing Cross Station to be switched off for four hours, <laughs> causing confusion and delays across the whole Kent region. So no change there. <laughs> the, the reason given was that she was thinking Good job it wasn't Princess Di, or they would have had to close down the whole of London. 
Harry, uh, oh. Operation for Prince. Which one and why? Oh, this is... Is this to do with Prince Andrew? Well, there's no, a picture of him to... naked in the sun. <laughs> and he, he, instead of a, a manhood, he seemed to have a crown, so maybe... Or some other kind of helmet, so maybe they were... <laughs> We're doing some operation to, to ch change that. Or it could be Prince Charles who, who broke his arm. Any I think, idea, I think it's the son of Prince Charles uh, who got a golf club over his head. Very good. And uh, had to have an operation to remove the golf club. <laughs> and, uh, Should have removed the head, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the Royal Family did a job. But they, uh... <laughs> mm, tomorrow. Good luck to you. Yes. Yeah. Did you have a nice Christmas five days ago? Because we get repeated. Yes. Don't right. <laughs> I did actually, yes. I, I can't wait for Boxing Day. It was fun the day before yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't oh, there a pity about Clive Mr. Anderson Tate. being knocked down by that car? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the driver's headlights were dazzled on his head. And just sort of... <laughs> yeah, it's Prince William who was rushed to hospital in a multi vehicle convoy in, uh, in June after a fellow pupil hit him on the head with a golf putter. <laughs> A spokesman for the school expressed surprise and regret and said it's absolutely unthinkable that a fellow pupil should have hit the prince with a putter, should have chosen a nine iron. <laughs> and uh, finally, Ian, no prizes for guessing, who's a four star Charlie? Oh, this is Prince Charles. Um, oh, point for that. <laughs> <laughs> and well, four stars so, of Doug Petrol, point for that? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> This is, um... Because he drives a Bentley, which is a very, very Bank good car, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yes, very good. Very good, yes. Very good, yeah. indeed. Mm. Sorry, that's not my question. used to um, having his own show. It's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get yours one day, Ian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Prince Charles drove in his car to a summit in Europe um, in order to make a speech about um, economy um, of petrol on cars. Mm. And then it was revealed after he'd driven in one himself. It's, uh, it's Prince Charles who, after making several entreaties on the environmental benefits of saving fuel, was discovered to have had his Bentley driven all the way to uh, Czechoslovakia to meet him. Uh, the car apparently does nine miles to the gallon. That's uh, almost as much as Princess Margaret. This is, uh, <laughs> this is merely the tip of the royal iceberg when it comes to petrol consumption. It transpires that the royal family uses 25 cars and 17 motorbikes for their engagements. They just can't get the Queen mother off that Harley Davidson. <laughs> All of which uh, brings us to the end of that treacherous round. And the ever mounting totals on our scoreboard read as follows. Uh, Ian and Harry have 18 and Paul and Clive are lengthening their stride with 23. And so we enter the welcoming arms of our penultimate round, some of the more frivolous bits of film footage to recollect, Ian and Harry, a particularly memorable, if damp, experience for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's the Pavarotti concert, isn't it? The, the royal family had their umbrellas up, and they were asked at the front, and all the politicians, and the people at the back asked them to put them down so that they could see them getting soaked. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Princess Di was mm. there, and Pavarotti sang a song, specially for her. It's all rather gorgeous, isn't I it? I don't remember any song called, called Overblown one. Tart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Princess Di was particularly annoyed to be there, since Duran Duran were playing Wembley Arena that night. <laughs> and by all accounts, uh, Norman Major was uh, pretty miserable too, as apparently Guns N' Roses were on at Hammersmith only. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm, Paul and Clive, a heartwarming, uh, some heartwarming footage of man's best friend for you. Um, oh, yes, oh. Rottweilers, Pitbull Terriers. This it's is to do with Kenneth Baker, isn't it? I recognised him there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is banning Pitbulls. They've got to be muzzled, haven't they? And uh... Kenneth Baker has. Yes. yes. <laughs> I thought it was just Kenneth Baker's always pleased to... Uh, eager to please John Major, and he heard John Major in cabinets one day say, Why don't we muzzle the bitch? <laughs> But she's still there. Mm. Well, they didn't manage the it, did they? Somewhere. Apparently there are 10,000 pit bulls in Britain, together with 200 band dogs and one Japanese tozer. So if anyone's attacked by a tozer, even Scotland Yard should be able to solve that one. <laughs> uh, the owner of the only tozer defended her They'll pet. arrest a poodle. <laughs> Put it inside for 15 years. Uh, <laughs> it'll be an Irish wolfhound, I think you'll find, yes. <laughs> 
Yes, the, the owner of the Only Toes who defended her pet. Uh, he's quiet and not aggressive with a fantastic personality, said uh, Mrs Yvonne Wilson as he playfully spat out her big toe. <laughs> uh, Ian and Harry, what strange agricultural practice is this? Serial killing. <laughs> <laughs> We do deduct marks for puns no. on this programme, you do realise. This is uh, crop circles, corn circles. It is. It's someone demonstrating corn. how they're made, isn't it? There's so two blokes called Doug and Pete, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's Doug and David, actually, before you go into Pete and Doug impersonations. All right, we're going to Dave and Doug impersonations. <laughs> Hi, Doug. <laughs> Hello. You don't recognise it, because Dave's not very famous. Doug. <laughs> 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 Serial <laughs> killer. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they think uh, of them, you know, yeah, I don't. Yeah, five mm. It's to do with a fraud, isn't it? It was <laughs> found out to be a fraud. They're not aliens. It's, uh, these yes. two people it said these we invented brothers. them. In fact, they were wrong. It was, in fact, Robert Maxwell being gentle with a secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Maxwell you. having a lie down, I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's they all said about they did them all, all of them all over the world, thousands of them in they six different have done countries, them all, no. yeah. which they obviously didn't. No. But the press, mm. having believed it was aliens, thought, oh, it must be Doug and Dave now. Yeah. Did some Doug rigorous checking, went and took some photos in the field, and then had went a back couple to of pints, the... and then went home. Went back to the planet Zanussi, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, it's all about the corn Zanussi circles. Uh, <laughs> series. Of... It's a particularly good yeah. brand of washing yes. machine. <laughs> Uh, but it's now claimed that they were uh, all faked by two pensioners, Doug Bauer and David Charlie. Uh, they were last seen heading off towards Scotland with a large rubber dinosaur. <laughs> so, uh, lastly, Paul and Clive, what's this uh, member of a popular beat combo been up to this year? Look, there's Esther about to arrest him. Mm. That's, um, that's, that's Bill Wyman trying to decide which one of those to marry. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got div he's got divorced, isn't he? Or uh, he's, he's suing for divorce, whatever you call it. Yes, it is uh, the Rolling Stones' wrinkly Bill Wyman, uh, who this year divorced a uh, 20-year-old Mandy Smith, whom uh, he first seduced when she was 13. And he's now going out with a 31-year-old. Outrageous, she's old enough to be his wife. <laughs> uh, Mandy Smith uh, received £4 million as a payoff uh, for a marriage that she says was only consummated five times. So that's £800,000 a bonk. <laughs> Even the DPP couldn't afford that much. No. <laughs> At the end of all that, it's time to uh, turn our gaze to the gargantuan totals so far amassed. And uh, as you can see, Ian and Harry have a not entirely bad 22, but Paul and Clive have a copious 27. Wow. We're building a real Maxwell of a score. Mm. And so we uh, enter the home straight that is our missing words round. Each team is shown a selection of the year's headlines with one or two <coughs> words missing. They have to name those words or come up with a better alternative. As is uh, traditional, he who lies last goes first, so uh, Ian and Harry. That privileged position is currently held by you. Right. Bosses put Lamont in what? Poor. <laughs> Jail. Panto. <laughs> James? No, a spot is actually the answer. They uh, put him in a spot? Hmm. Where? Idea, the isn't spot it? cleared up immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I always use Lamont. <laughs> uh, next, uh, Birmingham Six Detectives to what? Become judges. <laughs> uh, to face court is actually the answer. Uh, next, Kinnock scorns the Tories and lays out what? Frank Bruno? <laughs> <laughs> new, new patio? <laughs> Uh, it's a lovely thought. That's his policy for you. <laughs> his, his policies for you. It's a very sensible answer. I'll give you one. His priority. Oh, is excellent. Answer. Next, uh, London life. Zoo offers plan for what? Thatcher's retirement. <laughs> Open air barbecue. Lost a lot uh, of friends. Rescue. There. Rescue. Isn't rescue. It? Uh, survival is actually the answer. And Almost finally, 7,000. <laughs> no, it's not. 5,000 uh, uh, pit bulls still to join what? Masons. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling uh, Stones? No. <laughs> register. Nothing, nothing. Yes, new register. Very good. New register. Uh, let's see uh, if Paul and Clive can do any better. Not difficult. Uh, Fergie bows to Queen's ban on what? Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> No, friend. Bad children's books. Friend oh, is near the, uh, near the answer. And uh, next, like Kilroy is returning to what? Primitive pond life. 
slowly sort of regressing <laughs> backwards. Not as far as I'm aware, mm. old time is actually the answer. Oh. Next, Hattersley pours what on Major's leadership? Uh, spittle. <laughs> Le Monde. Peanut butter. <laughs> Scorn. Scorn is correct, yes, very good. It. Next, Orkney children are flown home to what? Dolphins. To, <laughs> <laughs> to spend Christmas in the arms of their family. <laughs> That's a lovely answer and completely wrong. Mm. It's a party. <laughs> and finally, bug is found in Mirror Finance Chief's what? Underpants. <laughs> Office. Office is correct. Yes. Well done. I thought it was collection of insects. Uh, well, you'd be wrong. <laughs> We've had a look at the pension fund and apparently a big fat cheque is missing. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas, I don't care. <laughs> uh, right, so after that non-existent display of lateral thinking, a fleeting <laughs> glance of, at our score reveals that this year's stuffed turkeys are uh, Ian and Harry with 26, and this year's plum puddings and recipients of a short snowfall are Paul and Clive with 31. Oh. <laughs> I, ne I never thought I'd see you with dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> Just another ball joke. Uh, so, a corn-fed chicken to our winners, a bag of giblets to our losers. But uh, before they rush off to Trafalgar Square for a quick dip, uh, there's our caption competition to pay our respects to. Paul and Clive, what did you think of uh, for this? Well, I need some Pop tricks. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> most, uh, most chemists yes. are uh, handy. Uh, <laughs> The family size is particularly useful at this time of year. Yeah. <laughs> what about the caption for this? Um, uh, come here, Rudolph, I'll give you a red nose. Um, <laughs> no, it's not a red nose, Rudolph, I was looking for. DPP uh, curb crawling scandal yeah. takes new twist. <laughs> <laughs> try, trying out these Wellington boots for a friend. <laughs> Thank you. Hang on, hang, not, hang on, Santa, you're Jeremy Beadle. It, uh, it's, a, it's the minicab driver, I'm not going to South Antarctica at this time of night. <laughs> These High Court judges, they'll kick anybody. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Ian and Harry, how about yours? EEC rules against Santa Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> Mirror pensioners get employment. <laughs> spot, spot the drunk. <laughs> Arsenal fans remember a happy time when they used to win. <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago now. And on the... <laughs> Fascinating Not football no. is. <laughs> <laughs> wake up, wake up. Oh. <laughs> I, I tell you, I'm not interested in football. I'm more interested in the bumper private eye book of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to get the video of the Clive Anderson show. <laughs> oh, yes, you can. <laughs> And There's on the, the video of you on the show. You were a, you were a superb guest. I was very good yes. on your show. You were excellent. Yeah. I right. didn't say too much. No, I didn't talk no. all the time. No. Mm. You got that out of your system. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> Baldy. <laughs> <laughs> and you fat face. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, why I'm on the team of the bloody yeah. Bash Street kid yeah. every week. An old acquaintance. And on that seasonal note, we say thank you to our guests, uh, Ian Hislop and Harry Enfield, Paul Merton and Clive Anderson. And I leave you until next Easter with news that sailing over to England for his Christmas concert, Luciano Pavarotti advisedly takes a walk along the starboard side of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, at long last, an answer to the mystery of the year, as Robert Maxwell is sighted off the coast of Gran Canaria. <laughs>